Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand the problem of charge leakage. We will understand this with a C square MOS circuit. So here on the screen I have drawn a C square MOS inverter. C square MOS is nothing but clock CMOS inverter and we have seen it's working in the previous clip. We'll quickly recap that. We know that when phi is equal to 1, phi bar is equal to 0. So my M3 and M2 transistors both are on and it is nothing but a closed switch and my circuit reduces to M1 with a closed switch of M2 and M3 between which the output is taken and an M4 transistor which is nothing but a simple inverter which we have already studied previously. So this clock signals help in data synchronization. But a question might arise, what would happen if phi is equal to 0 and phi bar is equal to 1. If that's the case, my M2 and M3 transistors both would be off. So it does not matter what is present on the value of A because M1 does not have a part to output and M4 also does not have a direct part towards output or my VDD does not have a part towards output or output does not have a part towards ground because my in between two transistors are off. Let's zoom in this transistors M2 and M3 which I have done here for you and let's see what's going to happen at this point of time. When M2 is off, this is a PMOS, we all know that in PMOS the drain and the source both are P types. So this is a P, this is a P and for NMOS both are going to be N types. But we also know that in order to avoid body effect or substrate bias effect, we have studied this in the previous clips. In order to avoid body effect or substrate bias effect, ideally we connect a source and a body at the same potential. Here ideally if that's the case we have seen what happens due to that but there might be cases where you want your body of your pull up which is nothing but in this case this body or the substrate or the bulk terminal is nothing but an N type and for a pull down which is an N MOS the substrate is a P type. So you want your substrate of PMOS which is an N type to connect towards VDD and your NMOS substrate which is a P type to connect towards ground. We do this if you remember the cross sectional view of a suppose say an NMOS this was my NMOS and this is my P substrate then we connect this substrate towards ground that is exactly what I have done and vice versa can be shown for PMOS as well this is for NMOS. So what's going to happen here is because these two transistors are off there'll be some leakage current flow and the first leakage current which we are coming across is nothing but the leakage current due to the PN junction diode which is reverse biased. See this N type is connected towards VDD and here is a P type so there will be a PN junction diode formed here where N potential is connected to a higher value and hence a reverse bias current will flow. The same can be explained here as well. P is connected towards ground and P and N so PN junction diode will be formed. You can show it here also. Depends. Ideally it should be between your substrate and your terminal which is connected towards your output. So there will be a PN junction diode which will be formed and because of this PN junction diode there will be some leakage current flowing. Now let's label this leakage current for the time being because this is flowing from N type towards P. So we'll call it as IP this current and this is going from N towards P. So we'll call it as IN to this current. There are leakage currents right. So in NMOS we have called the leakage current as IN and in PMOS we have called the leakage current as IP and they are reverse leakage currents. Now let's assume that there is a capacitor at the output and I out. So if we apply Kirchhoff's current law here, we'll come to know that current entering that is I out plus IP is equal to I n current leaving which is nothing but I out equal to I n minus I p. If we assume I n to be greater than I p is just an assumption then I out is going to be a positive value. Let's call this new positive value of I out to be equal to I L and let's see what is going to happen. So we know that I L is equal to I N minus I P 